What up, y'all? Jake the asshole back again, and we have a good one for you, my friend. It seems I have a professional globe shill on my nutsack. Uh, that's a bad visual. So apparently this professional globe tard has been assigned to me, and he thinks he can goad me into a debate with him by making fun of my mom and where I live and saying that I eat Hot Pockets. He thinks if he makes fun of me, calls me a chicken, that I will be forced to debate him and then he can get exactly what he wants and grow his channel and make money being a professional globe cuckoslovakian. So here's the deal. Nobody gets what they want from me. I get what I want from you. So I went and dug up an actual debate where Mick Toon loses. He gets absolutely flattened by a flat earther known as Red Pill Philosophy. So now I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like when Mick Toon does decide to debate. Check this out. Uh, it's a long distance observation I captured uh, with a P1000 um, showing stuff that's not supposed to be visible according to the uh, predicted sphere Earth model. And how did you uh, determine what was too far to be seen? The Metabunk Curve Calculator. Okay. Um, and then did you control all conflating variables? Did Aristotle do it when he claimed to have seen ships disappear bottom up and it was used as slam dunk proof he lived on a spinning space ball for the last 2,000 years? Well, Aristotle's not here, so this is oh, your... Oh, he's foundational to your religion. I didn't I didn't bring him up, so that's... Look, if you uh, want to throw Aristotle under the bus, that's fine. Let's just get that out here out front right now. I, I didn't claim anything from Aristotle, so I won't be... Aristotle is credited by multiple mainstream historical sources as... The guy who provided some of the most foundational proof we live on a sphere, one of which being ships disappearing bottom up. Did he account for all the variables that are taking place when you're making a long distance observation over water? Did he account for all that? So so bottom up is different than than what you're seeing here, right? Or did you see bottom up? I don't know what is exactly. No, no, it, it's here. flat in that footage. It, it's flat. It's not missing. That's the problem. It's not missing. It's supposed okay, to be hit so, by so, 80 feet of earth curve, not, there's no curve there. Yeah, so, so, but are you, are you, so I don't know, I don't know what this looks like, if for real, is this, is there supposed to be something there, or are we seeing the, um, the, the, the shore, or is there something obscured? Um, you're basically seeing everything. Now, in all fairness, in all fairness, I, I went out and I went to that observation point multiple times, and sometimes there was obstruction. It's true, and okay. maybe maybe that's why you asked me, did you account for all the variables? Because there are that, that's atmospheric not, that's anomalies. That's the variable I was uh, concerned with. Okay, but but did you take into account the the actual conditions? Like, do you have the temperature at the the um, yeah. Well, I go back to my original point. I go back to my original point. Did Aristotle take that into account when you guys put it in the textbooks for 2,000 years as slam dunk proof we live on a sphere? I've not written a textbook. If so. it was good enough for Aristotle, why isn't it good enough for me? Well, see. I you have to understand, bro, that when you ask me, did I take into account every variable? What you're saying is Aristotle failed in his observations, even though it's been used. Here, here's a, here's a clip from National Geographic. National Geographic did a hit piece on Flat Earth recently, and they said that, and here's a quote, I'm gonna go ahead and play it uh, for the viewers. Um, I'm gonna play this real quick. You'll start to lose the stripes. One way that Aristotle proved so, yeah, 2,000 years ago that, that the Earth that. is a sphere. Uh, over here. Well, I'm going to quote you real quick. I'm going to quote it for you real quick. One, okay. this is National Geographic, so we're going to find out if you're uh, if you're going to um, what your stance is going to be on this. So National Geographic says, "Quote: One way that Aristotle proved the Earth is a sphere, 
And on, let me keep playing. I'll get the rest of the core for you. The boat test. Very simple. Appears to stop this one. As a boat approaches the horizon, model proved 2,000 years ago. That proved 2,000 years ago the Earth is a sphere. The Earth is a sphere. Was with a boat test. Very similar to... Was with a boat test similar to the one that was performed by that investigative group that was out there with National Geographic. The boat test. Things disappearing bottom up in the distance. So this is a foundational okay. proof for the spinning space ball okay it's been used in, in in textbooks it's been referenced by national geographic it's constantly referenced as a slam dunk proof aristotle did it two thousand years ago as, as national geographic just said okay so so did aristotle account for all these refractive conditions that you're now asking me to to account for i did not bring up aristotle so i don't know no, 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 no. you brought man. up things disappearing bottom up and whether or not i have accounted for all the variables so what i yes. want you to do is i want you to disavow every time aristotle has been cited as a slam dunk proof for the earth being a sphere ships disappearing bottom up in a public school textbook by national geographic etc 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 will you disavow uh i did not bring it up so it's a straw man it's not a straw man, buddy. I just asked you to disavow. It's simple. I, I won't disavow something that I didn't bring up. It's not necessary. Should Aristotle have accounted for all the uh, refractive and atmospheric so conditions? If you want to talk about here, here's the deal. He's if running, guys. About, Come on, McToon. Just, just admit it. If you're so, going to demand so that I have atmospheric conditions accounted for, why didn't Aristotle, when he was put into textbooks for all these thousands of years? All right. So, seeing too far versus. So he's just going to ignore the question, everybody. Watch, Absolutely. watch it. It's a strong man. I will ignore a strong man. <laughs> Incredible. So, Why does Aristotle get preferential obscured. treatment? Seeing things obscured bottom is up he's is a different from seeing too far. Sad, man. Right? Very they're, sad. They're related, for sure. That's very so, sad. So independent of the distance that you see something, being obscured bottom up doesn't tell you anything necessarily about the, the radius of the Earth, but it tells you there's something blocking so are you going to make me account for all the refractive variables that you demanded a minute ago? Absolutely. I'm going to insist okay. that you do that. What about National okay. Geographic when they cited Aristotle without those considerations as proof? Now, now they did not say see too far. They said block bottom up. Right? <laughs> they did not say block bottom up. About? Or, Let's or see. did they say see, see the right distance or see too far? Well, now you're just being nitpicky and weird. We're talking about very, things disappearing into the distance. Doesn't have to be bottom up. But Looking we don't see far, anything other than bottom up. We don't see things side to side disappear or top down disappear, right? We see we see things disappear bottom up. So what causes that bottom up obstruction? That's a pretty key thing. Okay, we can move on if you're if you're not gonna if you're not gonna concede that point, we can move on. That's fine. I, I that's if, fine. If you want this about on, National Geographic citing Aristotle who didn't account for refractive uh, conditions, that's fine. We'll, we'll move on. So as you can see, folks, the old globe cut Mick Goon got absolutely flattened, got absolutely leveled by red pill philosophy in that debate. And he thinks he can challenge me to a debate by talking about my mama saying that I live in a basement underneath a trailer and that I eat Hot Pockets. Hey bro, you know where I'm from? When you talk shit like that, I don't feel like debating you. I feel like punching you in your stupid, ugly face. So I'll put it to you like this, McToon. You challenge me to a debate. I don't see any purpose a debate serves because you're not going to convince me that space travel is real. You aren't going to convince me that we live on a spinning space ball. So the only thing left that would make me feel any better is to punch you in your stupid, ugly, lying, shitbag face. That would make me feel better. So I challenge you to an actual fight. We can do it legally in uh, certain states where mutual combat is allowed. We can go do it on street beefs inside of a cage. McToon versus Jake the Asshole, full contact mixed martial arts until one of us gets knocked out. How does that sound? I challenge you, McToon, to an actual fight. Now, I bet you are too much of a chicken to accept 
So beings, I, I expect you to be a chicken and not accept my invitation for a real fight, my challenge for a real fight. So instead, if you'd like your, your fat butt buddy fight the flat earth, his name is Fight the Flat Earth. If you'd like him to fill in for you, I'd be glad to sock him in the face instead. In fact, open challenge to Mictune, Fight the Flat Earth, uh, Team Skeptic, Godless Engineer, uh, Simon Dan, whichever one of you little femboy, soy boy, globe cucks wants a real fight, I would be glad to fight any one of you. I'm five foot seven. I weigh about 150 pounds and I will waive the weight limit. I'm sure fight the flat earth. He's a big fat gourd with man tits. So I'm sure he weighs like 200 pounds. I don't care. I don't care how tall you are. I don't care how much any of you guys weigh. I will sock you in your stupid face because that's what you deserve. You are all shitbags. You're all liars. You don't deserve a real debate. You deserve my fist in your face. So open challenge to any one of you pro globe cucks. Any one of you pro globe cucks I mentioned, I will fight you and we can do it live on YouTube and we'll get way more views than some stupid debate. But my guess is every single one of you globe cucks will avoid this challenge like the plague. The definition of level includes, it is curve, a curved surface. Level is a curved surface. Level literally means level and level literally means a curved surface. You seem to have a different definition for level in your head. Where is the curvature? Well, the, the definition of level includes is curve, a curved surface. Level is a curved surface. Uh, let me read this. Is that like how Michael Jackson says bad means good? It yeah. comes along with the actual definition of level, which means a curved surface. Metal, level right? literally means level, and level literally means a curved surface.